Life's changing and changing fast. No matter if you live in a big city or in a small village, your life is being impacted by waves of change in your personal life, professional life, in any aspect of your life. But this is not an individual phenomenon. It is a global phenomenon. Think about society, economy, the environment. Humanity is going and is causing and is suffering a massive global wave of change. We could try to address this change or even to understand it using several different approaches. We could think of an esoteric approach and talk about the age or the era of Aquarius. We could think about the economy. We could think about the age of information, the impact of the internet. But we could also use a very simple but very powerful way to look at that. Let's use nature. In nature, change can be understood through the golden proportion or the Fibonacci sequence. We can see this sequence in the stars, in the galaxies, in the flowers, in the waves. We could see that spiral practically in everything that we look at in nature, even in your body. But let's use a very simple image, the classic image of the Fibonacci spiral over a cocoon. If you think about that spiral unfolding its elements, we could see the birth of this spiral. The classic way to see or to calculate the elements of this Fibonacci spiral are by adding the current term with the previous one. So everything begins with the non-manifested all, zero. From this zero appears the principle of all manifestation, one. When you add the non-manifested and the manifested, zero and one, you have another one. And the following element is by adding one and one and two, and one and two, three, and two and three, five, and three and five, eight, and so on. And there you have it, the Fibonacci spiral, right in front of your eyes. But if we took this spiral and instead of plotting the elements over this nice cocoon, we draw a line, a line of successive change, how would it look like? So if we think about the decades that we have gone since the major disruption of the last century, the end of the big war, and we saw the cumulative impact of change, decade over decade, we would have a curve more or less like this. Now imagine that this is only one aspect of your life, your relationships. But let's think about your profession. Let's think about the environmental change. Let's think about the waves of information that impact you in every second. So if we combined all those exponential curves, what image would we have? That line, that combined line of change would look more or less like this. This is the true meaning of the classic intersection of the cross. The cross is not a religious symbol. The cross means the crisis of the consciousness when it reaches its tipping point, its turning point. We are reaching that tipping point collectively, globally, as the entire humanity. So collectively, we are in front of this big wall, this big contrast 
between our day-to-day -day horizontal life and a totally new vertical dimension of a new state of consciousness and life that is coming upon us like a huge tsunami, the tsunami of the change of consciousness. Many people are aware or becoming aware of this change. And as a consequence, people are searching everywhere for an answer, for a key, for a solution of this paradox of our day-to-day -day life and a new state of consciousness that must take place. People are desperately looking for an answer outside, inside, in traditional ways, in new innovative ways through technology. Obviously, all those initiatives are very important and valid. But what we would like to offer for your own personal reflection is a different perspective to that. Because the key for that change is exactly at the center, at the intersection of those two lines of the point where the horizontal and the vertical dimensions of our lives meet, which is the center. In the center of the human consciousness lies a totally different principle, lies a universal principle, a universal key, a source of totally new answers. But to assess, and even most importantly, to utilize that source, that key, it is necessary that we undergo a true self-revolution. One of the many symbols that have been utilized in the past to address or to suggest that process of self-revolution or self-transformation is alchemy. So alchemy is not an old, obscure, lost science or even pseudo-science. Alchemy is a symbol a symbol of a transformation that must take place inside of us. So we've chosen amongst countless symbols of alchemy, this image of the royal pair, the queen and the king, because they represent the essence or even the cornerstone of this transformation that we are talking about. The royal pair doesn't mean a perfect couple and it's not the symbol of something that is far away from you. The royal pair represents the two poles of your own consciousness, the universal one and the human one, the sun and the moon. And they must meet in your life, in the tree of your life, in your natural life and celebrate this communion this union to generate a totally new state of consciousness. Alchemy is a process, a process that follows a very clear order, the order of the inner transmutation. To better understand how this can take place in us, let's use a very classic and at the same time beautiful image from Da Vinci, the Vitruvian man, that also depicts how our own body is a manifestation of the golden rule, the golden proportion. If we look at the Vitruvian man and we try to find the center of this image, where is it located? Can you find it? If you find the center of the circle, you're going to see that it is located right between the solar plexus and the sacrum plexus. In other words, the center of our biologic self. This represents that the center of gravity of the normal human being is located in the subconscious and unconscious level. And everything that actually drives us to act the way we do. But when this universal principle awakens in us like a new sun and reflects itself 
in the center of our soul, in the center of our consciousness, that is its mirror, the moon, it is as if the center of our entire life shifted from that egocentric point or that selfish center in us to something totally new. The center of our lives is elevated to the heart. In that moment, we become seekers. Seekers of something that we cannot define. Seekers of the truth. Seekers of reality. Seekers of a perfect manifestation that we cannot describe with words, but that we intuitively can recognize when we see an image of. So when the universal principle is active in us and touches the innermost core of our consciousness, our consciousness starts to function in direct relation and correlation with it. At the very beginning, in moments, in instants, like the light of the lightning in the sky. In those moments of awareness, something touches not only our hearts, but also our understanding. So areas of our brain that are dormant and cannot become active through the intervention of our normal egocentric state of consciousness are touched and they start to gradually become awakened. Like a pre-existing consciousness, like a pre-existing memory of something that is very deep in us as the archetype of our own true consciousness. This process may take a long time. This process may be like lives and lives living with a series of insights. But once these insights become like a permanent flow from our heart into our head, then a new way of functioning for our heart and our head can take place. Our head and our heart that have functioned in a separate and divided way up to that moment can finally become united. So in our hearts, a new identity, a new communion with the universal principle is taking place. And that union is changing the way that we see ourselves. That is the source of a totally new self-knowledge, a self-awareness that will gradually start to unveil to our own consciousness the real motives behind our actions. So our subconscious and unconscious motivations or our inner invisible world starts to become visible to the principle of this new consciousness. This represents that the true drive or the true motives that keep our life in constant motion will become visible to the inner eye of our soul. And when the inner world becomes visible enough and this new power of a new consciousness has touched, awakened and transformed not only our hearts, our heads, but also our actions or our hands, then the first loop of a new consciousness has taken place. In the terminology of the universal teachings, this is called a new consciousness, an enlightened consciousness, or even a new enlightened soul. It is not a coincidence that it represents a flow of energy, a new flow of energy that circulates through our sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. But it also represents the lemniscata, the symbol of eternity, the symbol of a new awareness that is 
taking place in us. That new awareness, that new consciousness, can then finally become united organically with the universal principle of the micro-universe, the microcosm, where it lives. This principle is not only the point at the center, but the manifestation field, the universal manifestation field that we live in, the universal sphere of the microcosm. That universal aspect, the spirit itself, the highest power of ideation in the entire universe can finally become united with the structure of the consciousness. And by becoming united with the central pillar of our serpent fire system, it then transforms not only the consciousness into a universal spiritual consciousness or a spirit soul consciousness but also modifies transmutes alchemically transmutes the four vehicles of manifestation of the soul the four bodies of our personality mental astral etheric and physical that is the meaning of the sublime symbol of the Caduceus of Hermes, of the stuff of Hermes. It is the meaning of the organic transformation that can take place in us. This new consciousness that generates a new state of life is the key of the transformation that is required from each one of us today. That self-revolution is the only way that we can unite our lives with this vertical dimension of a massive global change. If we don't go through this transformation individually, we cannot become true agents of change in the world because we'll be trying to repeat with our egocentric consciousness the old patterns, the old solutions for totally new questions. The future cannot be a repetition of the past. The future must be born from the eternal present that lies within us. That is the key. That is the path, the inner path, the spiritual path, that every seeker of the truth must go through. That is the path that lies in front of us since the dawn of times. The path that all spiritual schools present to the seekers. That path is not a dream. That path is a reality. And that path is also the message and the proposal of the modern spiritual school of the Golden Rosy Cross. Mm -hmm.